in the wildest dreams of a little boy. <laughs> or a little girl. This is exactly where dinosaurs roam. No, it's beautiful. This is so beautiful. Grown-ups trying to wake up. I'm just tired. <laughs> Can't imagine a better spot than southern Utah for a dinosaur dig. The best thing is to expect the unexpected when you're in the field. The better the breakfast, the better the work. Joe Surditch <laughs> knows he'll need the energy. We're going to try and walk there without stopping. Joe's got the coolest job. Uh, yeah. As the curator of dinosaurs at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Let's do it. Let's go. He's leading a group of stoked interns and college students to a remote spot at Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. Oh, this is about three miles each way every day. Okay. Two reporters had this fantasy of covering a dinosaur dig. That was me almost falling. But didn't remember the hiking part. I'm just trying not to fall on my camera. <laughs> this would be a nice hike if you weren't carrying camera gear. We can't keep up. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. Sucks. <laughs> Just gonna use this really long shot to show the passage of time. And suddenly the dig site materializes. And it's steep. Easy. And it's cramped. Careful. And it's tough <laughs> to balance a tripod. Yeah. yeah, a lot of our sites are on big high ridges. So we're always clinging with our toes to the sides of hills. Reality sinks in fast. Yep, there it is. As prehistoric bones start to be uncovered. Oh. Paleontology? Look at that. Is really hard work. Aim. I'm trying to. Aim. It's hard because I close my eyes when I get out <laughs> Paleontology is also entertaining. We sing all the time. Nikilo's <laughs> gonna find the bones. The bones they're digging up could belong to the Cosmoceratops, a relative of the Triceratops that lived 76 million years ago. So we're going to have one of the best pictures of a really rare or previously rare horned dinosaur um, ever. Grown up kids only dreamed of this. When uh, I was younger, I couldn't say my own name or mom or dad, but I could say Triceratops and I could say paleontologist. I was always the kid to be playing in dirt too. I'd go to the public library and get the documentary by Walter Cronkite on dinosaurs and watch that over and over. All that ancient history they learned about so here's the bone right here is now at their fingertips. This is just an unidentified long bone shaft right now. Uh, it's this really bizarre horned dinosaur. It's probably the most bizarre because it has eight curled horns like melted horns over the top of the head. Two little spikes that come off to the side and then a whole array of spikes uh, down the, the side of the frill. And then it has rainbow horns over the eyes. It's really cool to be able to see and uncover and be like, holy crap. And literally, there's even a whole bunch of fractures and it's not falling apart at all. This is really nice and really shiny. All this feels intangible. <laughs> you see pictures of people digging dinosaurs, you read about dinosaurs, but you don't realize that we're walking on dinosaurs. Yeah, that's a little chipper. Joe says there could be up to a dozen of the dinosaurs buried in the dirt. Oh, that was a good one. You got me in the face. This bone has been stuck in this rock for longer than humans have been around on the planet. And to be the first ever creature, not even just human, to see the bone and dig it out a little bit is a feeling that is unlike any other. It feels pretty awesome. I picked up a rock and I found a fossilized leaf. Lucky. It's pretty cool. I did something. It's like Christmas morning. Except with fossils. Yeah, it's not a dinosaur bone, but it's a leaf millions of years old. I still get the same chills that I got the first time I found bones. The kind of stuff dinosaurs <laughs> and dreams are made of.